What's going on guys? So one of our really, really popular and something that's been trending in our channel is that whenever we do some expert tips and what we try to do is we try to teach you just one thing because honestly, wrapping, PPF, all this stuff, it can be pretty daunting. So what we're going to teach you today is how to seam and what it looks like on a 2024 Model 3 Highland. So let's get right into it. So for demo purposes, I'm going to show you a couple things and we're going to pull some video from our archive. So I'm actually not going to be doing it in this car because we already did a video about how to bulk it, right? But let me just show you something that's interesting. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using what we call slip solution, right? And it's just soap. I want to show you how it actually places on it without any stretch. So one thing to note is that typical install will really install right be like underneath that. So that when you look at it this way, it folds over that, and that's very important as well. But this area is not really as important to protect because what really gets hit is all right here, right? This is where it hits you know, rock chips or whatever that looks like. So this is the typical professional install as well. So when I get bulk, and I'm gonna just do this and spray some slip, and then I'm just going to lay it down like so. I just want to show you how it lays down. So look at this. When you do this, you can see that there is no tension at, at all. But where do you start seeing fingers? Right about here, right? So this is what's happening, right? So when we design, we try to read this. So the material starts to bunch up right about here. But all of this is going to be flat. When we design our kits, what we try to do is we see the maximum point of like how far we can go and how do we keep it all flat. Traditionally, what a professional would do is they would use typically hot water. I like using just really, really hot water. And then use this line right here and you have to stretch it down like so, like this, right? And I would use a little bit bigger one. But when you do the here, I'm not using any hot water or it typically would, you're pretty much stretching across. And when you do that, you're getting rid of that material that you saw. So with that illustration in mind, um, once you, let me just tack this down just to kind of illustrate this. So this is what I used to do when I used to bulk, when I learned it. And this is, I learned th like this. So this is why I did it. And as I practice my craft, I changed my techniques, but just so that I can show you, once you pull that, you can see all this material right here, and then look at all that. And then we got rid of all of, of those. And then now we can see that this is, this is what a bulk would sort of look like. Again, normally, if you wanna see the actual bulk video, we're gonna put it in the link below, but that's kind of how it works. I made it look easy, but I think when you're first learning, it's really hard to grasp the, the concept of where to put your hands because it's really a one motion thing and you gotta move fast because you're kind of using a hot water. You're using usually a lesser slip with a little bit tack. So we call it like an all in one solution. So if you don't move fast, it'll tack really quick, which means you gotta get it right and then just kind of squeeze it really fast. So that takes a lot of practice. If you're trying to do this as a trade, practice that trade of like bulking and stuff. You need to learn how to do that. But if you're like doing this, like a do-yourself sense, we have this kit, right? This is our kit for the Model 3 Highland. Uh, it has two pieces. Remember I showed you that all the material was bunching up right up there? That's exactly how we designed ours. So the concept here then is going to be tacking here, using that as alignment, pulling it past here, a little bit past this line, and then after that, connecting that next piece into that. So let's go ahead and peel this. Also, you're just dealing with less material like this, so it's just so much easier, right? And then I can just place it like so. And then also, one thing I forgot to mention is that bulk method I just showed you, you have to cut it, right? So you gotta get a knife, and honestly, this is the most I think riskiest part, right? Because if you don't have the angle and you have it too deep like this, what's gonna happen? You're gonna actually cut your car and you have to repaint it and all that. You're gonna damage it, right? So I never really recommend people using a knife unless they're like actually experienced. But I just lined this up into this corner, kind of using this sort of a right angle, more like an 80 degree angle. 
this lines up perfectly. And once you feel pretty happy, all you do is just kind of get it back and then put it back down. Use a squeegee like this that we provide and just squeegee it all down, right? Really what I'm focused on is really this corner. And then you're gonna go to this side. You see all the fingers right here? Sorry, I'm gonna try not to do it. It's a really bad habit of putting it in my mouth. <laughs> but what we're gonna do is spray on top and then spray underneath if you need to stretch it a little bit. And look at this, once you stretch it, what happens? It goes away, right? And then same thing, if I don't, that's what happens. So what we're gonna do is spray some tack over here and we're going to stretch it all the way across to the point where none of those fingers exist. And you can see that none of them exist. And because I sprayed tack, it automatically kind of on its own actually just stayed, right? I'm not really going to worry about some of these fingers. But once that happens, you're going to look at this line right here. Since this is a pre-cut template kit, you don't want to actually be right on the seam. That's going to be riskier. And you can go up and down like this and hold it. And then we're going to squeegee everything down the middle and then everything downwards as well. Look at that, super easy. And we kind of half it, right, from here, and then everything just goes down. And then, look at that, super easy. Once that happens, you kind of do a double take, so do the same thing that we just did. Just making sure that all the solution is out. And then we're gonna seal all the edges. And this is such an important part. Why? Because if you don't seal it, water is going to try to get back in this pesky areas. And what tax solution actually does is it helps prevent some of that water to come back up there. Cause you're kind of like, we call it like sealing the deal, right? You're sealing. So nothing can go up there again. So there's some fingers here. You can just, okay. So once that's there, I can spray that and then I'm going to get the second piece that's on my hood and then just lay it down. Don't really need to be aligning or anything like that. That's not really an issue. Right now it isn't. All right, so here's how seams work. First of all, I'm using this bottom corner right here to seam. All you're wanting to seam is literally about one or two centimeters and that's really it. All right, work little by little. So now to pull back, spray a good amount of tack, and then you're going to just slide the piece. Here's the trick about seams, guys. We call it a butt seam, mainly because you're not actually overlapping anything, okay? You're actually like just like this. You're just doing that, okay? So just keep that in mind. Awesome. And now that I got this corner, look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but look at that. It's very, very hard to see, especially in this color. That's the seam right here. I'll show you when it's done. And then you're just gonna align it because there's a natural ending right here. You're just going to align it right here and then seam that. And if you notice how I do seams, I create an A and a B point from one to another. Why? Because you can kind of use this and move the middle up and down, right? So that you can kind of push the material into the, the piece A so that it seems a lot tighter. Okay, so this is almost no stretch. So this is gonna be fairly easy. I mean, this is like, cool. Again, focusing on just that. And then we, we can start actually pushing into it, right? So I'm kind of just using my fingers and I haven't even used tack yet. And then we're gonna push into that seam, okay? And this is where like you can spend more time, less time until you're happy. And then you can make your seam look really, really good. And then once you get that seam how you want it, you can essentially just 
push the water out. One other tip too during this process is that when you tack certain areas, you never want to go back to it. Why? Because once you tack an area, it's alcohol and water or distilled water alone, you're pretty much activating that adhesive. So when you actually get water into that area, what happens? That water or the, the slip solution actually gets trapped inside that area, right? So you never want to, once you tack that area, it's pretty much permanent, right? So like, you don't ever go in back into that area, always go away from that area. So I tacked here, so I'm never pushing water into that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, first of all, do a quick double take. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did. And then there's a couple fingers that's popping up up here, which is totally normal and expected. Cool. And then we can do the same thing and just seal all the seam right here. Perfect. Looks great. And all the exposed edges is going to be pushed down. Okay. So, look at that. You know, obviously you can take a lot more time. Can I make it even a more perfect seam? Sure. But this is how you would typically seam things. And this is more, more common at least, um, even for pro template kits. For example, like the, the bumper, the grill, typically it's like one long piece and you have to pretty much tack A and B and then you kind of move it around and then bring everything. But you have to do a good amount of stretch to get there. Uh, and then that seems with the bigger bumper piece or something like that. That's really common within our kits as well. So for this seam, it's not necessarily in a very obvious uh, line, like a body line. But a lot of the times when you do seams, you do want to do it in an area that's a very obvious place. And what I mean by obvious place is like hard body lines is a really good place to seam because it's, it's like natural, right, for that line to be there. Uh, in this case, we, did, we put that seam in, in this kit. Um, in an area where the stretch is most extreme. So then we pretty much cut it right at the point so that both of these can lay flat, right? So it makes it a lot easier. This really introduces a lot of people into actually trying this out themselves. So hopefully that gave you a little bit more information about how it looks like to seam. This is obviously just one example. If you have any questions or if you seam, let us know in the comments below. We love making this video. So click on that subscribe button and we'll see you later.